Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thanks for the intro, Matt. Um, as Matt said, my name is Kieran Liebeck. I'm at the University of Washington. And today I'm going to be talking about some of our work that explores the challenges of enabling multiple augmented reality applications to, to run alongside each other. And this work was done in collaboration with uh, Yoshi Kono and Franzi Rosner at UW. So augmented reality technologies like smartphones, headsets, and AR-enabled windshields are fundamentally changing how we interact with digital content in the context of the physical world. These technologies promise to understand the context of a user's physical environment and to blend digital information directly into a user's perception of their, their world. And we're seeing all kinds of application domains emerge, ranging from things like entertainment and education to automotive navigation, maintenance, even military applications. And traditionally, users have only been able to interact with individual AR apps in isolation. But in the future, people might really benefit from the ability to interact with a bunch of apps running at the same time. Imagine you have some kind of a headset, you're walking around a city, and maybe you have a bunch of different applications that are helping you navigate your surroundings. Things like restaurant finders, games, navigation directions, maybe social media apps that annotate people around you. And there's no reason these apps shouldn't be able to run at the same time, right? They're all augmenting the user's world in very complementary ways. And we have other systems like desktop PCs that already provide multi-app ecosystems in some capacity. So what makes this problem hard for AR? And the challenges that I'm going to be focusing on today really stem from the unique output needs that AR systems require. In particular, instead of existing on the backdrop of a blank computer screen like we're used to, AR apps exist in the context of the user's physical world, and their behaviors may intimately depend upon the context of the user's environment. For example, this automotive app that generates these red bars to mark the shoulder of the road wouldn't really make a lot of sense if those bars appeared in the middle of the road or elsewhere in the user's view. And the physical world introduces some level of variability and unpredictability that AR apps will need to contend with. And the problem is that if we want to support a bunch of apps running at the same time and augmenting the user's world in this way, then we can end up in this situation where they interfere with each other as they compete for space to display content in the user's view. And this isn't great, right? It can annoy the user, interfere with their ability to interact with apps or perceive content properly, and just generally detract from their experience. So ultimately, the goal is to actually build AR platforms that can effectively mediate these kinds of conflicts between apps and while still enabling this kind of rich functionality. But we currently lack any direction for how to best go about doing this. We don't have a good sense for what our options even are, let alone what the trade-offs associated with these different options might be. So rather than prematurely implementing any specific single design path, in this work, we're, we're laying out a conceptual framework for how to think about the multi-app design space more generally in the hopes that we can inform these future efforts for actually building out these kinds of systems. So one of the first things to consider is what kinds of display abstractions actually make sense for AR, right? Because the interface that a platform provides for apps to display content ultimately puts a sort of bound on the space of output behaviors that these apps can recognize. So for example, traditionally we see this single app abstraction employed today, and this is great for really immersive apps that require the user's undivided attention. But clearly this doesn't help us with the goal of multi-app support, which is really what we're going for here. Another option is to confine application outputs to their own bounded regions of space, something like an AR analog of the traditional window abstraction that we're used to seeing on things like desktop PCs. And again, this might suffice for certain types of applications, right? Think of something like an AR artwork app where you want to put a virtual painting on your wall, and this doesn't need the ability to resize or reposition itself um, autonomy, uh, autonomously. And so the benefit of this window type model is that it's a clean way to visually partition applications from each other. But in doing so, it trades off the ability to support the kinds of really contextual and flexible output behaviors that I think make AR really powerful and unique. So the model that we really wanted to explore was some sort of a shared world that gives apps as much flexibility as possible to display the kind of content that they want to. And the main question we had to figure out was, what can we do when these applications try to display content in the same space, and how can we mediate these sorts of conflicts while still enabling the kinds of rich dynamic behaviors that make AR so cool? So if we want to figure out a way to mediate conflicts in a shared world, one of the first things that we need to decide is whose responsibility is it to actually do this. For example, is it the OS's job to mediate conflicts? Do applications need to negotiate with each other to resolve discrepancies? Or does the user need to provide behavioral cues to their own apps for how to behave? So we consider all of these actors, and if you're interested, you can check out the, the paper for more details. But for the sake of time, I'm going to focus on some of the directions we thought seemed most compelling, which involve the OS more specifically. 
So as a starting point for thinking about how an AR platform's OS can mediate conflicts between the outputs of different apps, we actually drew on some of our prior work that looked at the problem of AR apps interfering with users' views of the, of the physical world. Um, so these could be explicitly malicious applications or just buggy apps that aren't intentionally trying to do anything bad. Um, the idea here was to introduce some kind of an output module into the OS that takes in requests from apps to display content and then modifies them in some way if needed. So for example, if you have a pedestrian walking in the street and you had a bunch of apps that were occluding this pedestrian, the idea is that this module could take some sort of action on the apps to, to make this pedestrian visible to the user. So I'm gonna talk about two different OS-driven strategies in a multi-app context that kind of leverage this initial foundation. So the first approach we'll consider is enforcing some sort of policies at runtime, where the OS observes visual interactions between the outputs of different apps, and then take some action at runtime as, as needed. So for example, let's say you've got a navigation app displaying arrows in the street, maybe some next generation game like a new 3D version of Pokemon Go. And maybe you have a policy to ensure that the users can see these arrows that are, are showing up in the street. So the idea is that with a runtime approach, the OS can observe these visual interactions, like the, the Pokemon blocking the arrows here, and take some kind of action in response, for example. Moving them, making them transparent, and, and so on. The second approach I'm gonna consider is a declarative output model, where applications specify the kinds of output behaviors they need at a high level, and the OS actually takes care of the underlying placement and how to satisfy this. So what does this look like? Well, let's say you've got some kind of social media app annotating people around you, maybe a restaurant app that displays ratings above nearby restaurants, and traditionally, these applications would have to detect specific information in the physical world and position their own virtual objects at very precise locations corresponding to the physical world. So the idea with a declarative output is that the app can say what it wants at some higher level, for example, you know, put me above Alice's head, and then the OS can actually decide how to best satisfy these, these needs. So these are pretty different approaches, and to understand the types of situations in which they might be viable, we needed to look at some of the trade-offs and limitations that they present. So let's look at runtime policies first. A key limitation of this approach is that it's only based on these visual interactions between the outputs of apps without any sort of information about what the apps are trying to accomplish at a high level. So let's say you've got two apps trying to put something above Alice's head here. Using this kind of runtime approach, the only thing the OS can tell is that one application is occluding another, but it doesn't really know what these apps are trying to accomplish at some higher level, so it can't respond in any sort of intelligent fashion. In contrast, if we have something like a declarative approach where the OS knows, okay, these apps are trying to put something above Alice's head, then it can respond more intelligently, for example, by resolving the conflict, by rearranging the output of these apps so that they're no longer interfering with each other, but now they're both still visible to the user. Um, so this is, this is nice, but it only works if these applications can specify their needs at some sort of a higher level, which suggests that something like a declarative output model might be best suited to apps that are really placing content relative to some objects in the, in the physical world. It's not necessarily clear how we would apply this approach to something like the navigation app or the Pokemon game, where the applications need really precise control in terms of 3D coordinates where they're moving their objects around the world. So in these types of situations where apps can't specify these higher level needs, something like a runtime policy approach can act as a potential fallback mechanism to provide some level of mediation while still allowing this kind of flexible App behavior. And the, the takeaway here is that different types of mediation techniques might be viable for different types of applications. So system designers will need to think really carefully about the types of app workloads that they want to support when deciding how to best mediate conflicts between apps. So when we started out, we were thinking about strategies for preventing occlusion between the output of different apps, since that's the most natural kind of issue that can arise when we're thinking about you know, apps competing for the same, the same spaces. But what we found was that the act of doing this sort of mediation can actually enable new issues we might not have, have thought of. So you know, let's take our navigation and our Pokemon app again as examples, and this policy that prevents apps from occluding these, these arrows. So what this means is that by moving its own virtual objects around the user's world, this navigation app can actually induce visual changes in the output of other applications that might not have been doing anything problematic to begin with. And it's not just a problem for runtime policies. We can have other issues come up with things like declarative output as well. Let's say we've got one app putting a bunch of stuff above Alice's head here, and some second app comes in and tries to do the, the same thing. If this first app has, a, has acquired essentially too much space in the user's environment, the OS might decide, you know, I just don't have the space to accommodate this new request. 
which means applications can actually prevent each other from generating content in the first place if the system is designed to allow this kind of behavior to exist. So these are just a couple of examples, but the bottom line is that the act of mediating certain conflicts between applications can actually enable new types of conflicts we may not have thought of to begin with, um, even if these are very well-intentioned capabilities. So stepping back, there are a lot of different ways we can think about mediating conflicts between applications. And if you're interested, you can check out the paper um, for more. I'm not going to go over everything on the slide here. But at a high level, our key insight was that any sort of output mediation technique is going to infringe upon the functionality of apps in some way by design, right? But the, the nature of this infringement is going to differ very heavily depending on the specific design paths that we employ. And it'll have different implications for the types of apps that, that we want to support. So given these different types of design paths and trade-offs, the, the last thing we wanted to look at was what is the state of the art today in terms of the, the types of multi-app capabilities that today's platforms are, are providing? So for example, the Microsoft HoloLens uh, supports multiple apps running inside these very traditional 2D windows that we're used to seeing on, on things like desktops. The Meta 2 takes a very similar we're good. The Meta 2 takes a very similar approach um, in terms of putting app content inside these bounded 2D windows. Uh, and the Magic Leap 1 takes a slightly different approach. So it allows multiple apps to exist at the same time within these, these bounded regions of, of 3D space. Um, so we wanted to probe these capabilities a little bit further since they're kind of unique compared to something like the HoloLens and Meta 2. So we wrote two very simple apps. One creates a cube and run, one creates a sphere, which you can see up here. Uh, but what we thought was kind of interesting was that when we ran these apps at the same time, the default behavior of the platform was to actually interleave their outputs in 3D space so that they're both kind of blocking each other in different ways in sort of an unintuitive way from a user's, um, a user's perspective, potentially. So basically what we found here was that the multi-application landscape of today is still really barren. There's no extensive support for multi-app environments. Uh, and, and these platforms, when they do provide this kind of multi-app support, they're favoring these more restrictive abstractions like Windows instead of something like a shared world with more complex output mediation capabilities put in place. So this problem space is still very wide open. There isn't really a platform providing this kind of robust, flexible multi-app um, landscape. So uh, to wrap up, multi-app AR is a really exciting prospect for future technologies, but figuring out how to prevent these kinds of conflicts between apps while still enabling really rich functionality is a really hard and important open problem. So this work just lays out some initial directions to hopefully kick off further exploration into the space, and it's by no means a final word on the matter. So um, I hope that you'll share your thoughts, reflect on other open directions in the space, and I hope this talk has given you a new perspective on what I think is a really cool open problem space. Thanks.